Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to fill a viewer request for Google. Uh, now, I have looked into Google before. I have not made a position in Google. I do not own an individual share of Google, but it was one that I was looking into, it, especially as the market was falling. It just never got into my price range where I was interested in buying the stock. Could it get there in the future? I don't know. And when it gets there, am I going to start a position? That will be up for me to decide, but nonetheless, I'm going to share my opinion in this video. Uh, yeah, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion. It's for entertainment purposes only. I do not have an individual holding, except for in my. I do own it in my index funds, but nonetheless, I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose. Stating my opinion here, guys. Now, Google very fundamentally sound business. Their financials are pretty A1. If I were to just jump over this eight pillars, just a simple matter of valuation right here. But these two red X marks right here are five-year numbers. Their current PE matching up to their five-year average right here, that is a red check. Their current PE is sitting at 20. So maybe this is uh, potentially an opportunity of, of getting into a position of a fundamentally sound business. Now, on a five-year rate, they're buying back 5% of their shares annually. That's pretty solid. Uh, very low debt. They easily cover their debt. Free cash flow, net income growth, and revenue growth. They invest their money very good. And this is the big one, is that return on equity, basically those share-based compensations, such as issuance of shares and share buybacks. They do a very good job of, of understanding when to do that. And they get a solid return on their equity. Uh, solid margins. Uh, Profit margins, gross margins, a little bit high on the price of sales. That's the one uh, thing that I would say about it in terms of just looking at the metrics. But it is Google. You're going to have to pay a little bit of a premium for Google. Um, but there is a couple things that I want to point out. And we're going to go to the income statement for that. And this is this large increase in revenue. Guys, as you get larger as a company, it becomes a lot harder to grow. Now, we have not seen that pullback for, for Google yet. So... So I don't want to assume that this revenue growth is going to continue saying as you get larger, you have to find more and more ways to increase your revenue. It's a lot harder to do that. And the big thing that I've seen in terms of how they're doing that is you look at their acquisitions. They are making acquisitions year in and year out. And it would be very hard to go and look into every single acquisition that Google's making because they're making multiple acquisitions every single year. Now that doesn't mean that that Google is just going to to fall off a cliff. No, this is a fundamentally sound business. Um, but nonetheless, I think that my numbers are going to be a little bit more conservative than what other people's numbers are. And we're going to try and do the stock analyzer tool uh, in this video along with it. But there is one other point that I want to get across before we move over to the stock analyzer tool. Is one, the year 2020... In 2021, 2022, up to now, these last three years, look at this net income. You see this huge spike in net income? This, and, bef and leading up to that, they were pretty consistent. Pretty consistent growth right here. Huge spike, huge spike. And then starting to slow down again a little bit. But uh, nonetheless, these are two very big spikes in, in net income. Is that going to be sustainable? Now, the other thing that is a little bit alarming is 13 billion shares outstanding. That is a lot of shares out there, guys. That's a lot of shares. And now they have been buying back shares consistently, and they are probably going to continue buying back shares. But nonetheless, 13 billion shares is a lot of shares, guys. This, this isn't a typical uh, 20 to 100 million shares. No, we're talking 13 billion shares out there. If you were just an average investor and you were buying five shares, you're buying a very, very tiny portion of this business. There's 13 other, 13 billion more shares out there if you're buying five shares. So keep that in mind also when you're investing. But uh, nonetheless, that, that was my point. Yeah, very fundamentally sound business with Google. And we're going to hop over to the stock analyzer tool where the first thing we're going to focus is on, on revenue. Now, if I were someone new coming into this software, and I would sit here and say, yeah, 20% revenue growth. I mean, that that looks like a fair, a fair assumption going into the future. But you got to remember, as you get bigger, it is a lot harder to grow your business. And then we got to remember the years 2020 and 2021. Kind of fluke years. If I'm just being honest, those years are very fluke years, and those are tweaking into their five-year, ten-year, and one-year numbers. So keep that in mind. 
Now to get a good look of this, I'm going to go to the macro trends. You see this huge, massive increase in revenue. You see this, guys? And you see how we've had this steady decline in the amount of revenue that it's growing? You, you see what I'm trying to get across right here? So in these numbers, my goal is going to try and be conservative. But you can see, leading up to the year 2020, they were still pretty consistent in those uh, mid-teens to 20% growth. So very, very impressive what Google's been able to do. they got a lot of brands. If you got, if you got time, go look at all the brands Google has. And you'll understand why they've been able to consistently grow their, their business. But going into the future, it is going to be very hard to match up with these and compound 20% annual growth for a 10-year analysis. My analysis right here is a 10-year analysis. Being able to compound 20% growth going 10 years into the future, they would just be absolutely massive. So I'm going to be very conservative with this revenue. And to start off, I am going to be a little bit wider, but on the low side, I'm going to actually use 5% revenue growth. Now, I know I probably get a lot of pushback on that, but in the end, I want to be as conservative as possible. And we're going to use 10 and 15. I feel 15% on the high side is very reasonable. I would not be surprised if, if Google uh, put up 15% uh, going into a 10-year period, and I wouldn't be surprised if they beat that. But in the end, my goal is to be con as conservative as I possibly can be. So the next thing we're going to go over is profit margins. So I'm going to go over the margins, and you can see the net margins right here. Now you can see, now I'm really focused right here. From 2014, now their business was pretty consistent going into those years, but you see how we're stagnant in these low 20s to 20 flat? Very stagnant right here. And then we have another little, little shelf right here where we're 20%. 2021, 2022 came along, boom, huge increase in net income, and now we're starting to re revert back to a mean. Am I going to use these tw mid 20s, high 20% uh, profit margins? Even though they were putting those high profit margins in right here, you got to remember they've been making a lot of acquisitions. Their business is a lot different now than it was in 2010. A lot different, a lot, lot different business now than they were back then. But I do like this shelf of this low 20s, so I'm going to use that for a floor price, and we're going to push that up to the mid 20s right here. So for for profit margins, I'm going to use 20, 22, and 24. And free cash flow margins, I'm probably going to use the same exact numbers. I don't see much of a disconnect. I don't see a reason to use different profit margins right there. So this, these are the numbers that I'm going to use for my analysis. Now for PE for a 5% revenue. For 5% revenue growth, their five-year average PE is around that. Let's, let's just go back and get this point across right here. You got to remember, they've consistently been growing 20% rate. And for a 20% growth rate, yeah, it makes sense to pay a 30-plus PE for Google. But going into the future, if they're not able to put up that 20% growth, I, I don't want to pay this high of a PE for that. So it doesn't surprise me that they've started to pull back and their current PE is sitting around 20 right here. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, I, I I like to match up the revenue that they are generating to the PE. So for a 5% revenue growth, I'm probably going to pay around a 15, and we'll go uh, 20 and 25. We'll just, we'll just keep it simple right there, and we'll use these same exact numbers. And we want our 15% annual growth, because if I, our annual return, because if I'm not getting a 15% return, I'm just going to stick to broadly diversified index funds. I don't have to stress about anything. And yeah, I'm, I'm just not going to stray away from my investing strategy. So we want that 15% return. So I'm going to hit analyze right here. And yeah, these are the numbers that I'm looking for. Um, now on the low side, am I expecting Google to get down to 50 bucks? You know, if it was down there and they were putting up numbers like this, you know, I'm still going to be investing this middle to low assumptions right here. Now I am also going to do to tweak these numbers and go 8, 12, and 16. And we're going to use the same numbers for the most part. I actually am going to push this up to about an 18, 22, and 26, 18, 22, and 26. We're going to hit generate right here. And yeah, okay, you can use either one of these models, but on the high side, I don't know if I would ever put numbers higher than this, if I'm being completely honest. Now, if I wanted to tweak these down even one more time and go 8, 10, 12, we'll keep those same profit margins. 18, uh, 20, and 22. 18, 20, and 22. 
okay now my numbers are scrunched down and this this is a very reasonable uh, look right here so current price of Google is trading at about hundred eleven dollars yeah I just needed to pull back a little bit and I think the low that it got down to was uh, let's see what that low was we can see yeah we got down to hundred five dollars we set a bottom double bottom and then another low right off of that it's got a good shelf of resistance right there at 105 I'm looking for a crack of that support and that crack of the support is gonna bring me really close to my middle assumption and that's how I'm playing Google on the next video we will match these evaluations up to the chart and we'll go from there I hope you guys enjoy the content and we'll see you on the next one